Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we identify and mess with the cadaver, the hanged man, the crucial, crucial quest objective for the beginning of the game. And uh, in fact, I think for a large part of the game, this, this guy is going to be at the center of, of everything. So, we're inspecting him. Last episode... We inspected the belt and the boots, and we took a step back, and he's dead, and uh, it has been dead for a while. We haven't found too many things yet, but he was apparently upright when he was killed. So, that would make sense. That would be coincidental with the lynching. But we didn't come to any conclusions yet. Kim has had enough of my shit, honestly, but uh, we're just, you know... Pushing, pushing forward. Let's inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars. He turns around to breathe before inspecting it closer. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. Hmm, I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A true get sunshine. Mini. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampoules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting, and then... A sound. A shrill flash followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? He slides the camera closed and tucks it away on his belt. There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glossy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. I'm gonna look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home. Just subaquatic terrors there. These eyes used to be blue, baby blue. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Tell me, who are you, dead men? I'm gone. What? What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. 
It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Where have you gone? Into the wow pile yonder. Where's that? In the past. Way out west. Well, I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. Hmm. <laughs> well, I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, copper rooney rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Okay, is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Of course not. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just a Harry or something. That's right. Harry. Could I really be Harry? You can be anything you want to be, brother Copo. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Huh. Who, who killed you? Love did me in, brother Copo. It was love all along. Was it really? Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Maybe this will lead to something? Something indescribable, unforeseen. Miraculous? Ha! <laughs> the clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you, slowly. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest, and it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? Yeah, a deep sea creature. No, not quite. Be fair now. A, uh, a baby affected with harlequinism. You sure wrinkled out of that one, Coppolini. Hmm, enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Hmm, maybe I will see you in my dreams. I don't know where that line is, though. It got disappeared. Hmm. So how... How do we get him down, Kim? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. He stops to think and then checks his notes. Eh, let's step back and take another look first. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos, and extremities blotched pink and blue. I have something I need to know, corpse man. Of course. You have questions, don't you? The power of your imagination is at your service. But unfortunately, none of the questions are new. Ooh, there's the line. Uh, yeah, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down for the, from there. Mm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, 
there's the question of cutting it. Can't someone else do it? Someone else? He pauses. You mean like the police? Uh, yeah, call the police. Someone already did. You know who came? We did. Because we have made bad life decisions. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. Yeah, it seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. We are not getting him down already. Not getting him down is a task that's already accomplished. Sadly, it's not our job to keep him up there, but to get him down. I don't really want to pull his head off. How do you plan to get him down then? With social sensibility? Are you going to educate him down? Yeah, maybe we can ask for help from the harbor? I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Confirmed. It's unsafe. Yeah. Wait, let's reconsider. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Maybe we could shoot him down? Yeah! The enthusiasm is unrestrained. Bang, bang, time pig! Shoot his head off! How? The lieutenant remains unaffected. I... Uh... You know... Uh... Sh just shoot the belt? The bullet will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Well, take it. Take the shot. Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Shoot that motherfucker down. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. A lot of things were wrong with that shot. The Phalostes was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. Fucking idiot! Mook of our asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno is not fucking handicapped, is he? It's okay, man. Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Pino clad. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. Try again, maybe? No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. He looks around at the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. So what now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. You know, you don't feel like too bad of a shot yourself. I can try to shoot him down myself. It's bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks here. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't hit the victim. He pauses and then shrugs. Yeah, I'm gonna need your gun first, though. They only have one gun! <laughs> Oops. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Officer, why do we only have one gun? He asks, carefully loading his pistolet. Remember when I told you I didn't have my badge or uniform with me when I woke up? I didn't have my gun either. That is even more unfortunate than the badge. You need to contact your station about it as soon as possible. Try not to lose this one, please. The piece shines in his outstretched hand. I'm gonna take the gun. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani boyka! Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! I'm gonna feel the weight first. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal 
is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. You've held this, a P9 armistice, before. At some point, it probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable, like you never laid it down. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Kuno is silent. Aggression gathers in the air. The trigger feels delicate and ready to break under your finger. I'm gonna point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? She hisses. At least you won't miss. Well, yeah, it's a red shot for a 42. It's hand eye coordination. And I think. Can I do this again? I don't think I can. The problem here is I don't think I have anything that lowers my hand-eye coordination. So I'm actually going to level up right away. Because the thing is, what happens with the 42% rolls is that they're the single biggest jump from one percentage chance to the next because of the way rolling two dice works. Because it's not... It's not a simple, like, graph of the percentage. It's a, it's a, a bell curve sort of situation. And so, it goes from 42 to 58. This has done me well in the past, doing what I just did. But it also has bit me in the butt. But I think it's fine. I can point the gun at goodness. <laughs> Let's not do that. Although I kind of want to. Let's close my left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, slick, with the falling rain. The corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying! You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? Shut up. Or what? You gonna fuck me? Her voice is uh, almost a whisper now. You wanna fuck me, pig? Is that what this is about? You know what? I'm going to point the gun at Kunese. Do it! Set me free! Don't. You feel the lieutenant's hand on your shoulder. She's ripping her blazer off to bare her chest. Do it! Fuck you, little shit! Put it right here, Mulka! She points to her heart. Right here! I'm going to point the gun at the belt. Intense shit, copper! She pants, breathless with excitement. It wasn't intense, it was pathetic! And now I have a minus one. Let's do it. Pull the trigger. <sighs> a plume of smoke erupts from the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. With your ears still ringing, you lower the weapon to see what happened. You missed the belt but hit the corpse straight in the chest. Bits of ribcage protrude from the skin. No blood, only a murky sludge dripping down his belly. The sudden stink makes your eyes water. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry, I knew it! What a mulco! Ask for another shot. You'll get it with the next one. The goddamn light reflected off some window, surely. Can I, can you reload it please? I need another shot. The cadaver is already compromised bad enough. We don't have to make it worse. It came out wrong. You made it sound like you're some sort of roulette addict looking for a fix. Ask again, more control this time. Please, Kim. There is silence. Vitupa wants to fuck up again bad. Molko Vitupa, what is that? What the hell kind of words are those? Asshole. Don't provoke her. The lieutenant takes his sidearm from you and then holsters it. Shot him in the chest! The creature is still in disbelief. What a fucking idiot. It's not the gun's fault you can't shoot. It's your pig hands. Uh, pigs don't have hands. They have, like, fucking hooves or something. Kuno has hands. 
He displays his little fingers. They're pink. Kuno can shoot that shit down for you. Lieutenant, we shouldn't trust Kuno with your service arm. He says he can shoot it down. The lieutenant does not dignify that with an answer. He snaps the button on his holster and says, We still need to get him down somehow. His tone is growing tired now. The stench makes him turn away from the corpse. Yeah, but how? The bad way. The way I didn't want us to. He sighs. <sighs> By asking the harbor for help. They have the tools and the men. If they put him up there, they can take him down too. How do we get inside the arbor? From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly door. He looks around. To the gates. Let's fight, I say. Says our physical instrument. But won't it be dangerous? To ask the suspect for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Everard Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Clearly we can't. Suck my dick, bitches! Who's the Everard Claire? The leader of the Union. A dangerous and corrupt man, from what I hear. You don't want to owe him much. Yeah, don't go being someone else's bitches. You're Kuno's bitches. Okay, let's go to it then. Yep, that didn't work out, but oh, you had fun doing it. I don't, I'm not actually sure what, what role that was, because maybe the role wouldn't have done anything with a 58. But uh, it doesn't matter. It showed up on camera. And uh, we have... Didn't we have this on hand? Oh, it's because of the tools updated because of the weapon that we just had. And now we have to get the body down. Let's go. Let's Let's go talk to... I don't really know. Well, we need to talk to Gart about the... Oh, that's right, secret passage. We have a secret passage. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky. Cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships. Clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. What is in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. And what is down the shore? Urban coastline. Rain dripping off etonite covered roofs. Cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction. A defunct research and development building, once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City. End of all lines. I'm gonna run my fingers through my dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess, flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. What's in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. I'm going to shake my shoulders again. You shudder, looking down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. Two green snakeskin shoes stand at attention on the mosaic paving of the plaza. What's in the north? Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clotheslines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. 
and closer to here. A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath the feet of a dead man. He swings from a tree, a gaping hole in his bare, rotting chest. That was, that was my, that was my, mm hmm that, mm hmm So what's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. What is Jamrock? Revachol is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Revachol. Droplets form on your eyelashes. That's a really interesting thing that Revachol is being portrayed as the capital of the world. I really don't think that's the case. I really, really don't think that's the case. It's home. Why am I not there? To be in Martinez where no one goes at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution fell. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? I have a brother in the cut. Where the hood at? The hell? <laughs> Uh, I know that reference. I think? I'm gonna shudder and look further. In the rain-swept distance above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. It's the only home you have now, but you can't go back. Not like this. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. What's below? Collapsed storm drains. Old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. Doors leading down to Le Royale. The catacombs to which, for three centuries, they delivered the blue-blooded dead. Motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. We are. Yep. I was gonna say we we have uh, we have a secret passage, and we have the key from Gart that we need. Hey Gart, sorry I ran away. I I ran away a little bit. It's complicated. Real mature man. What exactly were you trying to accomplish? He crosses his arms. You do understand you still owe me money, right? Damn, your feet thought we got away. I... Don't I get something for my effort? You know what? The stupid drinks you've had are on the house. You know why? Because I know you can't pay for them. Not because you ran away. He crosses his arms. Now, I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window. That's a hundred square. Thank you for your cooperation. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I can't let you up there. He points upstairs towards your room. Now what the hell did you want? I assume you wanted something to come back here. Yeah, it, well, the trash container out back, is it yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? 
to keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what this feeling is. Prod at him and find out. Doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revachol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Yeah. We need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the keys. The lieutenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Please cooperate. He takes the keys from under the counter and hands them to you. Just bring them back once you're done, please. By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. Okay. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Do I even have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Up on Marvel Hill. Why did you say that? C those are... I... Lieutenant Kitsuragi, do you know a place called Marvel Hill? No. He thinks for a moment. But isn't that an expression, not a place? An expression? A saying, up on Marvel Hill, a great high place, one that is impossible to climb back to. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. But could I trace the way back somehow, to the exact street, the exact number on a building? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Maybe it will. But it'll have to be next episode because we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.